Today we're going to be riding Zwift on Apple TV using the updates to the cable device. Uh, this setup will also work for the iPhone or iPad version of uh, the Zwift application as well. So to get started, make sure you have your cable unit handy. We can go ahead and start up the cable config app. You notice nothing's happening on the screen. We double tap the cable unit and it starts up. We can see the green LED is flashing. And if we just get it close, the cable unit will connect up to the application. And now we're ready to start to uh, connect, connect up our sensors. So we go ahead and tap for the menu. We choose scan ant plus sensors. And one thing we'll notice here is that the kicker that we're using uh, does broadcast a number of different Ant Plus protocols. Uh, the most interesting for us right now is the Bike Power uh, protocol, as well as um, the kicker also generates the speed sensor, um, but we don't uh, need to connect up to that because it provides the speed as part of the uh, Bike Power service. And down at the bottom here, you'll notice that fitness equipment is also being uh, generated by the, uh, the kicker. Uh, we're not going to connect to the fitness equipment at this point. Um, once Zwift has the full FTMS implementation, FTMS being the fitness machine service, to allow uh, connectable Bluetooth control uh, of BLE devices, uh, once they have that implemented, then we will be able to switch over and use the fitness equipment connection uh, to be able to um, control the kicker uh, without having to do a secondary connection, which we'll go through uh, in a minute here. So we'll go ahead and select the bike power. I'm also wearing a heart rate monitor, so we will connect to that as well. And there's also a, a cadence sensor mounted on the crank of this bike so that we can get cadence information uh, to Zwift via the cycling power service. So we'll select that connection as well. Go ahead and save that uh, set of information. Let the cable unit save that, reconnect to it. And now we should see the service or the screen to be able to select which BLE services we want to enable. So please go ahead and read through this uh, explanation. Essentially, it says that you have the option of connecting any of these services. Uh, the recommendation is to connect as few services as possible to uh, be able to work properly with your application. Uh, because Zwift does not support FTMS at this time for cycling, we're going to select the cycling power service. You'll notice that you want to have the power meter selected and also the cadence sensor so that both pieces of information from those sensors will be able to be sent to Zwift via the cycling power service. We're also gonna turn on the heart rate service so that we can get our heart rate data into Zwift as well using the Ant Plus uh, connection. So we'll go ahead and hit save assignments. That goes and reconfigures the cable unit and we are almost set to go. So one of the things that is new with this update to cable is the ability to name your sensor set. So let's go ahead and change this name to call this the Zwift uh, sensor set. It's going to name that set up there and then we'll go ahead and switch over to our BLE output. Now we can see that the cable is converting the data coming from the ant sensors over to the BLE data. If I pedal a little bit here, we'll see that power shows up, there's our speed, and cadence will show up in a moment here. So there's our cadence as well. So at this point, we are all set to go ahead and close the cable application. One thing that we recommend doing is mounting your cable unit on your bike so that it, it stays in a, a nice secure location that's close to the sensors. We can go ahead and go back to the Apple TV here, choose the Zwift application. Looks like we're all set with our user all set up. So we'll go ahead and start up the user. It's gonna go take us over to our screen for choosing our sources. It's important to be pedaling while you're doing this configuration so that the cadence shows up properly. You'll notice here that all of our sources are selected. We can go ahead and go through the process to show you what it looks like. If I go ahead and select a power source, I'm going to want to connect to the cable uh, as the power source. I can go ahead and do the same thing for heart rate. 
deselect that, select it again, select the, the cable. Um, we do the same thing for the cadence. In this case, because Zwift is not currently supporting the FTMS service from the, for the controllable feature, we're gonna leave it as the connected up to Wahoo's custom BLE service uh, that Zwift uh, is supporting. So we can go ahead and start riding. And now we can just go out for our uh, fun ride uh, through the London Loop today. Notice as I get my RPMs up to the desired 90 RPMs, my watts are Staying steady because Zwift is adjusting my resistance for me. So we're leveling out here on a nice 1% incline, and I can generate a nice 120 watts to uh, give us that nice 90 RPM. Now we're ended up with a downhill here or a 4% degrade, negative grade, so I can go ahead and shift gears up and get a little more speed going while maintaining about the same power output. You can see how Zwift is doing the control and we're getting the feedback on heart rate, cadence, as well as the power uh, coming through the cable unit.